Now we are familiar with diff and diff. We know what is technically done in an OLS estimation. So let's have a more critical view on the standard procedure for evaluation. So let me spend some time with the controversy between Card and Bojas. And uh, they are in conflict with respect to the interpretation of the so-called Mariel boat lift. In April 1980, Fidel Castro announced that Cuban nationals wishing to move to the US could leave freely from the port of Mariel. And by September 2018, about 125,000 mostly unskilled Cubans left, mainly to Miami. And this resulted in an almost overnight growth of Miami's labor force by 7%. So as a economist familiar with a simple labor supply, uh, labor demand model, you might think that uh, such a, an enormous increase uh, in labor supply um, should, if people get jobs, be associated with lower wages, right? So wages going down. Um, but if jobs are already scarce and uh, the original situation is that there is already too much labor supply in comparison with labor demand for a given wage, if this is the um, status quo with a certain amount of unemployment, then uh, you might expect that a sudden increase in the labor supply uh, leads to more unemployment. So that's a the background, uh, theoretical background, if you have just the, the perfect competition uh, model in in mind so uh, there is perfect competition and uh, labor supply and labor demand is in equilibrium um, and uh, wage which is above the equilibrium wage will lead to increase uh, unemployment so what I do now is have a look to the uh, study, 1990 study of David Card, uh, the impact of Mariel boat lift on the Miami labor market. Then uh, nine years later, the Ancris Kruger response, um, the Mariel boat lift that did not happen. And uh, then further articles on that issue. So until today, uh, this is an issue and uh, during the refugee crisis, in Germany, um, so this was uh, was getting more and more important. So because at that time we had an influx of additional people up to one million, uh, so this might end up uh, in a kind of labor supply shock in labor economics terms. And the question is, does additional labor supply lead to higher unemployment? or does it lead to more uh, employment and uh, lower wages or what does happen, right? So, and uh, this discussion gives us a little bit empirical background what could happen. So let me summarize uh, the card paper. The background is uh, already described and uh, the Mariel Boat lift could be interpreted as a natural experiment. So that is an exogenous shock. So we talk about a natural experiment if there is an exogenous shock. And uh, the analysis is based on individual microdata between 1990, 1979 and 1985. And uh, in the data, Cubans are identified separately. So CARD compares the data from Miami with four other cities and these four other cities 
uh, are then here at Atlanta, Los Angeles, Houston, and Tampa are then the control group. So the Miami labor market is, let's say, the treatment group, and the rest are the control group. So these are, in fact, regions. So this could be used for a different diff approach. Well, the exogenous shock uh, took place in 1980. So we have uh, two uh, periods, the before period and uh, the after period. And if you just look at the logarithmic uh, logarithms of the real hourly earnings, do we see anything here? So let's have a look on the on, on blacks, right? So increasing Cubans, a little bit less. Hispanics, a little bit more, whites, no change. And in the comparison cities, whites, are even a little bit less. Blacks, a little bit less. Hispanics, a little bit less. So uh, with respect to earnings, uh, it looks that uh, there is no um, change into the wrong direction, saying that uh, wages uh, Will, will will go down if you just look at the descriptive statistics. Then uh, what about unemployment rates? So once again here, this is the natural experiment. Uh, we now look at the unemployment rates. So this is uh, before, uh, this is uh, after. It's just descriptive statistics. Let's look at Blacks 8.3 uh, goes up, right, to 9.6. Uh, Cubans uh, goes up. Uh, Hispanics go up, goes up. So the unemployment rates increase. So what about the, um, the comparison group? So the blacks uh, goes up. Uh, Hispanics also go up, right? And uh, so the Cubans are exclusively here in uh, the Miami labor market. And uh, with respect uh, to whites, so we have even a, a decrease here in the Miami labor market. And this decrease is larger than the decrease in the comparison uh, cities with respect to uh, the unemployment rates of individuals aged between 16 and 61. Now let's put these numbers together in a table. Uh, so just talked about the unemployment rate, right? And uh, now the Miami uh, labor market for blacks uh, before, after, and uh, comparison cities before, after, and this turns out to end with a negative effect on the unemployment rate. So the unemployment rate of blacks goes down. And the same is true for whites, right? For whites, before, after in Miami, and before, after in the comparison cities. And the causal effect, according to different diff, is that the unemployment rates of whites goes down. And uh, this is surprising. And in contrast to what theory uh, would predict, as I mentioned before, having a competitive labor market model in mind, where we have labor demand and labor supply and uh, we have a wage which is a little bit above the equilibrium wage so we would expect if there is already unemployment that a change uh, in labor supply to ls prime would lead to more unemployment and here we see it's less so this is in contradiction to the perfect labor market model uh, there are two possible explanations why there is uh, no a negative effect on the unemployment rate. Uh, one is uh, that Muriel 
displaced other immigrants and natives who would have moved to Miami in the early 80s and had the boat lift not occurred. And uh, the second is that the growth of industries that utilize relatively unskilled labor was quite high, so that additional labor supply could uh, be transformed into jobs rather than un more unemployment. It's amazing that uh, such a big group could be absorbed pretty uh, fast into the uh, Miami uh, labor market. Nine years later, Anchors and Kruger, uh, in their empirical strategies in labor economics, uh, came up with an article uh, called The Marial Boat Lift That Did Not Happen. So in summer of 1994, again, 10,000 of Cubans boarded boats with Miami as their destination. So this uh, looks like a second um, marial, potential marial boat lift, right? uh, an influx of uh, low-skilled workers to Miami. However, the U.S. government ordered the Navy to divert uh, the would-be immigrants to a base in Guantanamo Bay, uh, that's, uh, meanwhile, um, connotated with something else, but at that time it was just a bay uh, and it was not uh, Miami. So, and then they imposed CART's research design on the data of this period. So now, similar, uh, Miami, before 10.1, after 13.7 with respect to uh, the, the most interesting outcome variable, the unemployment rate. So exactly the same like before, right? Comparison cities, 11.5 before, after 8.8. .8. So here the result was that the influx of uh, workers that, that did not happen uh, led to, a, to an increase of the unemployment rate of 6.3 according to the different-diff approach. And uh, with respect to the whites, before 4.9, after 3.9, and uh, comparison cities 5.4, 4.1 after, so once again exactly the opposite, an increase in the unemployment rate, so a positive effect on the unemployment rate of blacks and whites, uh, although nothing has happened, right? So this uh, study led to more research, uh, specifically by Harvard economist George Borjas. So he did not uh, aim to replicate Card's study, uh, so he wanted to give a reappraisal of the evidence of how the Miami labor market responded to the influx of uh, Mariolitos. And uh, he observed that not only did the influx of the Mariolitos increase the number of workers in Miami by 8%, so this is this labor supply shock, right? It especially increased the number of high school dropouts. Uh, this is his... Uh, specific view, the high school dropouts, uh, the labor supply by high school dropouts was increased by, by almost uh, 20%. And uh, the unbalanced structure, uh, nature of the supply shock suggests that a closer look at the wages um, of the high school dropouts might lead to different results, right? So uh, this is now uh, not viewing at the unemployment rate like before, but uh, saying, well, uh, we have a labor supply shock, so the labor supply curve shifts to the right, hmm? and for a given labor demand, uh, there should be a negative effect uh, on the wages. So this is here the focus. Well, here, pick one number of Cuban immigrants by year of migration, you see that 1980, uh, an enormous influx, so the spike 
stands for the number of immigrants plus 110,000. And now it takes heterogeneity into account. So uh, saying, well, 60% of all the Marielitos were high school dropouts, right? And um, if there are high school dropouts, then the number of low skill workers rose by almost 20% in Miami. And so why don't we focus the study on uh, the outcomes of the least educated workers in Miami to get a feeling of what has really happened. All, however, study suffers from a small sample size. And here you see descriptive evidence. So this is the log wage of high school dropouts between 1972 and 2003 with a 95% confidence interval. And uh, that's the shaded area. And what you see is that the blue line, the log wage is going down for those uh, who are hit in Miami in comparison to outside Miami. And that's exactly what Bojas would like to show those who are highly affected by the influx uh, from Cuba. They suffer via low wages. So there are two more things that should be mentioned. First, uh, Bojas joined, uh, criticized the choice of the comparison cities uh, by um, Card, and he chose other comparison cities. So we should be aware that the comparison cities are different. And um, so he uh, criticized Card that uh, Card uh, chose uh, a comparison cities based on their employment trends observed after the Marial supply shock rather than before, and he chose other comparison cities. So the issue of comparison cities, so what is outside Miami is here a crucial one. And uh, second, uh, he uses so-called synthetic method and constructed synthetic city uh, based on several characteristics as controls. And I would like to go a little bit deeper in a separate video with respect to that uh, method that is meanwhile pretty often used. So overall, uh, Borjas does not criticize the uh, effects on employment, so he agrees with that, but he focuses on the wage effect, right? So and he says, well, uh, the high school dropouts, they are hit by uh, the influx of Mariolitos the wages of high school dropouts uh, went down and so the supply shock did affect Miami's wage structure. To sum up, uh, we started with CART 1990, so this influential study on the Marial boat lift and uh, this was re-analyzed uh, by Anchorist Krieger, 1999, so they chose the same empirical strategy and found out uh, that there is a causal effect. Although nothing has happened, that shed some critical light on the diff and diff approach. Uh, Bojas, 2015, re-analyzed the uh, wage impacts of the Marielitos and uh, coming up with the idea that the high school dropouts were hit by the influx of uh, mainly high school dropouts from Cuba and this is until today a hot topic and in a next video I will come up with a 2017 paper that gives kind of overview on the current knowledge in that field.